Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, July 28th. Last Sunday in July, Senator Elizabeth Warren is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. It is one week since Joe Biden dropped out of the presidential campaign and Democrats are backing a new candidate. The senior senator from Massachusetts is here in the chair to talk it out. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR, everyone. I'm Ed Harding alongside Ben Simino, as you can see this morning. And Charmin Sacchetti is off. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren is here at the table with us, so let's just jump right in. Great to see you. Thank it's you for great coming. To see you. Great to Thank see you. you. Thank you for having me. All right, let's go back to last Sunday. Hard to believe it's only been one week. <laughs> <laughs> President Biden drops out at 1.46 p.m. last Sunday. Right. Less than 30 minutes later, he endorsed his vice president, Kamala Harris, for president. And an hour later, 3.21 to be exact, you tweeted that you're also endorsing her. Why did you back her so quickly? Oh, so quickly. It would have been earlier, but I was in an airplane without Wi-Fi service when all of this happened. Look. I have known Kamala Harris for 14 years. Uh, I got to know her first when she was Attorney General of California. I was setting up the consumer agency. It's right after the crash of 2008. Mm -hmm. And we worked shoulder to shoulder to beat back the banks that were foreclosing against people they had actually cheated. Um, I then worked with her on student loan debt. We've worked on a whole lot of issues since then. Um, also, she has been our leader, our leader on access to reproductive rights, on access to abortion since the Dobbs opinion. And frankly, when you're going up against a convicted felon, who better than an experienced prosecutor? So I see it this way. She's pulling our party together. She'll go toe to toe with Donald Trump and she can win in November. So almost every major official in the Democratic Party followed suit, the latest being former President Barack mm -hmm. Obama. But wouldn't it be better for the party to have been served by an open convention? Do you believe Kamala Harris is the strongest candidate to take on Donald Trump? There's a lot of rising stars in the Democratic so, Party. So, you know, I just saw an interesting poll on this. Sometimes the polls kind of give you a sense of what else is happening out there. And 70% of Democrats said, I'm all in for Kamala Harris. Let's get this done and focus our attention on, uh, Joe, on, on beating uh, Donald Trump. And I think that's where a lot of people are. We've had a chance to know her. She is so experienced. She's so um, capable. And we all know that. She's got a good long resume. And people are just excited to have her in this role. She's someone who fights from the heart. But, but Senator, to, to, to expand on Ben's point, mm -hmm. you've run for president. I have. You've expressed a desire that you would like to be president. I have. Is that gone? Do you not want to be president? I, no, I don't. I want to be the senator from Massachusetts. I'm running for re-election, by the way, and I hope I get re-elected to do that. This is the moment for Kamala Harris, and I think we, we all know that. She's got the right set of experiences. She's right there in the White House. And she's been fully vetted. She's been fully, fully, uh, come on. And the Republicans have thrown everything they right, can at her right. for years now, haven't even dented her. I think she is the right person at the right moment. And do keep in mind, 80 million people voted in 2020 that if President Biden had to step aside, they were all there for Kamala Harris. Well, and to, to expand on that point, it, it, Speaker Johnson said, what, 14 million people voted in the primary for Joe Biden, and he's not running. So should, should the voices of those 14, people be, 14 million people be ignored? Uh, well, I don't think they're being ignored. This is part of the point that I was making. Democrats have come together. It's only Republicans yeah. who are upset about this. And why are they upset? Because of that very last thing I said, right? She's pulling our party together. She'll go toe to toe with Donald Trump and she's gonna beat him in November so and the R's don't like that. Let, let's drill down on the numbers. The, the polls across the board say that a majority of people disapprove of President Biden's job in office. 538 has that average up to 56% of disapproval while fewer than 40% of people saying that they approve of the job he's doing. With that in mind, Senator Warren, should, should the vice president run a campaign on the Biden administration's accomplishments or on Kamala Harris is the, is the future? In other words, which direction should they take? So I think of this as Kamala has this chance just to reintroduce herself to the American people and to talk about the things that she fights for and let people get a sense of who she will be as president of the United States. 
She fights hard for working families, to cut costs for working families, to make sure they don't get cheated. She fights hard for women to have access to abortion. You know, she is the first sitting vice president ever to visit an abortion clinic. She has stood with the women who have mm -hmm. been told by their doctors that they have to be left to be near death before they can get the medical treatment they need. Um, she is someone who just doesn't let bullies boss her around. I think of it this way, Ed. This, this race has fundamentally changed in just the blink of an eye. The issue of abortion and women's reproductive rights has moved right back to the center. And remember, this is the thing for which millions of women across this country after the Dobbs decision came out really focused in on. It also, what's come back to the center is the other side has nominated a convicted felon who has also been adjudicated a sexual predator. So we've got the prosecutor mm -hmm. versus the felon. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be the shape of this campaign All going right. forward. So this race has been full of earth shattering mm -hmm. moments already. Yes. But the next big one, potentially, who will be Kamala Harris's pick for vice president? There are reportedly about a dozen names being considered by her being vetted. Uh, we're putting the people that ABC News has listed on the screen there. You see everybody from Arizona, Senator Mark Kelly, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. I'll go down the whole list here. Um, what are you looking for? in a potential VP. So the way I look at this first, can I just stop and sort of take a bath in the fact that we have a really deep bench here. Look, there's our next generation of Democratic leaders, people who can step up at the national level. But the second thing I want to say, nobody knows the job of vice president better than the sitting vice president. Joe Biden has made clear that he has treated Kamala Harris like a partner. He has relied on her. He's given her tough jobs and asked her to go do them. I think that's the key here. She wants someone who will be a partner to her because Kamala Harris is all about public service, about making this country work, not for a handful at the top, but everyone. And I think she wants a vice president who will help that, her do out it. Out of that dozen or so we just showed you, was there one that you would pick? No. No, you're not going to go on that. I'm track. not. I'm just not going there. We didn't see it just out of curiosity because we uh -huh. live here in Massachusetts and, and she is the governor of the, of the Commonwealth. Maura Healy's was, name was not on that list. Just, you know, is she in that in that bench you were talking about? Well, I have to say she's certainly in the bench. I think that the job that Maura has done, both as attorney general and as governor, make her truly one of the Democrats' national stars. Um, Maura has really shown that you can make real change, you can take on tough fights, you can deliver. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Moore is part of the Democrats' future. All right, let's turn our attention to the Republican ticket. You mentioned them yeah. a couple of times already. You were on The View earlier this month mm -hmm. where you shared your thoughts on J.D. Vance. Let's have a look. He is the J.D. Vance now who is more Trump than Trump yes. on abortion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is the J.D. Vance who says cut Social Security and Medicare. Think about that. And will help Donald Trump do that. He is the J.D. Vance who says get rid of the Affordable Care Act. On the other side, you enlisted Senator Vance's help uh, on a bill that you were working on that would have clawed back compensation from uh, c CEOs of failed mm -hmm. banks. And in that process, you're quoted as saying he was terrific to work with. Mm -hmm. So which is it? Uh, it's both. He was terrific to work with. And look, I, I, I want you to understand this. I will work with anyone to try to rein in the giant banks. I need allies to get that done. And I was happy to have J.D. Vance as one of those allies. But also understand this. J.D. Vance really is more Trump than Trump. You know, I'll pick up one more. Right now in America, 30% of all women live in a state that effectively bans access to abortion. Now, we're fortunate here in Massachusetts, not us. But if Donald Trump and J.D. Vance take over the White House, it won't be 30%, it will be 100%. J.D. Vance not only wants a nationwide abortion ban, he wants no exception for rape or incest. That's how extreme J.D. Vance is. That's not a guy who should be near the White he House. He also said he would not have certified the 2020 election as Mike Pence has. Has Congress done enough to put safeguards in place? No, Congress has not. 
uh, Republicans have blocked us on this. And the fact that part of J.D. Vance's tryout to be vice president is to say he will serve the man, Donald Trump, rather than our nation, and that he would do anything, including not do his own constitutional duty if called on, tells us where he stands on democracy. What does he care about democracy? Nothing. He is for Donald Trump, first, last, and in between, because that's what it took to get the VP spot. Senator Warren's in the chair. We're on the record. Stay with us.